Back then, before I even knew what anime was, I watched a bunch of shows like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Naruto, and even Beyblade as a kid. But besides those shows, there was one series that truly caught my attention. And that series was Dragon Ball. Now, I love Dragon Ball. Whether it's reading the manga, watching the movies, or playing the games, I've become a big supporter. I even ended up buying all the skins from the recent Fortnite crossover. You can't keep getting away with it! But like I mentioned in my Kakarot video, I play Dragon Ball games heavily. Rage Blast 2, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and Legacy of Goku were some of the few games I spent most of my time playing. But back in 2015, a brand new Dragon Ball game was announced. Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Xenoverse was a pretty big deal when it came out. There had finally been a game released with a story mode that didn't have us relive DBZ for the 50th time. This time around, you enter the world of Dragon Ball through creating a custom character and becoming a time patroller fixing any changes within the timeline. It was about time we were able to create our own characters for the world of Dragon Ball. <clears throat> uh, for a game that was good. And because Xenoverse was a huge success, Xenoverse 2 was announced and released a year later. Like most anime games, Xenoverse 2 was published by Bandai Namco. It was developed by Dimps, which they're best known for developing games for Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter, and of course Dragon Ball. Like Xenoverse 1, Xenoverse 2 brought back a lot of features like CACs, where you can make different races including Majins, Saiyans, Humans, Namekians, and even Frieza race. Outside of the Saiyans and Humans, every other race had unique features that were included when you customized them. But since Saiyans and Humans share practically the same features, there wasn't exactly anything unique about them outside of their playstyles. I think the customization aspect for this game was decent enough to let slide, but I do wish there was better hair options for us to choose from, and better body types as well. Like, why does the male Majin race have only a fat version of himself? It goes from fat, to fatter, all the way to fat as hell. Give me a skinny boo to play as. Now, depending on which race you choose, you receive stat bonuses from them. Majins have high defense, Saiyans have high attack power, Earthlings have a balanced staff for offense and defense, Namekians have high health, and Frieza race have fast movement speed. You would think the options to pick certain races would be difficult, but in all honesty, I just went with the Saiyan race because, well, they're Saiyans. <laughs> Duh! So of course, I customized my character and this time, I had a name that wasn't Silence AC. And that name, ladies and gentlemen, was Okra. Get it? Cause it's a vegetable name and Saiyans are named after vegetables? <laughs> okay, yeah, that name sucked. But Okra was finally created and was a part of the world of Dragon Ball. Besides the stat bonuses that each race received, Whichever race you chose, you had different fighting styles to go with them. And after playing all of them, I've come to the conclusion that they all function pretty well with their own unique movesets. You really won't have a hard time figuring out how to use the controls because the game has made fighting extremely simple. And honestly, you could spam the same combos with little issue. You're given three bars as you enter a battle. Your health bar, key bar, and stamina bar. Your key bar is for the skills you earn in the game and depending on the move, it will cause a certain amount of key. As for your stamina bar, it's used for movement and evasion. Whether you're flying fast, teleporting behind opponents, or even using evasive skills, they all cost stamina. You can also guard to prevent attacks, but just know your stamina can be broken and leave you vulnerable until you fully regain it back. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. As you play the game, you'll be given XP to level up. And as you level up, you'll be given attribute points that go towards the character. You can also wear certain clothes as well to give bonus attributes, which seems a bit problematic at first because it sounds like you're not able to wear what you like without looking like a crackhead with high attributes. But the game has a system where you can create a thing called QQ bangs that will give you certain attributes when you combine materials together. So you don't have to worry about being forced to have no drip and wear whatever you like. On top of the attribute points, clothing, and QQ bangs, the game also offers super souls, which you guessed it, grants you bonus attack power and special effects. But once you fully leveled up your character with the right skills and attributes, then you'll really end up on the right track playing this game. Once you enter Xenoverse 2, your CAC will be able to explore Canton City, which is essentially the place where you and other time patrollers live. Now, this place is much bigger than the first Xenoverse game, Toki Toki City. But within Canton City, you have so many places to visit. I liked how there were different sectors for us to explore because each part had not only something that was in reference to the Dragon Ball series, like Kame's house in the resort district, there were also other parts for you to visit that were very much new, like the business district, 
Recreation Plaza, and the Patroller Academy. I hated visiting the Patroller Academy. Okay, hate might be too strong of a word to use, but when it comes to Elder Kai's lessons, f him and everything he stands for. For those that don't know, Elder Kai gives you challenges where you do specific combat techniques, which at first isn't remotely hard at all, until you reach Challenge Quest 13. There's a certain combo sequence that the game requires you to do, and truth be told, you have to be quite literally pitch perfect when executing the move. Because if you don't, you'll fail. Again, and again, and again. <laughs> but at least you get potential unleashed once you finally complete everything, so... Yeah. Now, as big as the place is, Xenoverse 2 has included three very helpful features for you to travel around a lot more easily than running on foot. First one is that there are transfer shop clerks that quite literally transport you to different parts of Canton City. But that's the boring way of traveling. The second option for you is using the vehicles the game offers early in the story, which is pretty cool. You can even change your vehicles, which my personal favorite was the Nimbus Cloud. Oh, what have they done to you? Why is it so stiff? Kind of makes me want to... The third option is easily the best way to explore Canton City, and that of course is by flying. Being able to take flight and see the city from a higher point of view is something that I'm glad the developers included in the game. Only downside is that you have to have a flying license in order to fly around the city. And by doing that, you have to complete the Frieza Saga in this story mode. It's a bit ridiculous to say the least, but once you get your license, you rarely even use the other options. There's also shops located in Canton City which you can visit and buy certain things, like skills, materials, clothes, and even accessories. In addition, there's an area called the TP Metal Shop, which sells items and only accepts TP Metals as currency. TP Metals can be rewarded, or you can just buy them. Which, let's be honest guys, I don't think microtransactions is ever the best way to do things, but thankfully the game doesn't force you to buy them. Just imagine you're in-game playing, then out of nowhere, QUICK! Buy some TP Metals and get some bonus clothing and skills! Yeah, no thanks. Outside of Canton City, there are also 5 different locations throughout the map that are called Time Rifts. Time Rifts are essentially phenomenons that are a result of history changes that create fissures in the very fabric of time space. Or at least, that's what the wiki says about it. I don't know. The point is, each location has specific missions for your CAC. Some of them are fun, like joining the Great Sandman and going out to save the city. And some, not so much. Like protecting the Mechian Dragon Balls from the Frieza Force. It's nice to know that even though the time rifts are smaller areas, you're still able to see some of the details included in certain places. And on top of that, there's bonus missions for your characters depending on the race you've chosen and the area you're at. These bonus missions were the next big step towards evolution. This time around, Xenoverse 2 introduced unique transformations for all races. And, well, Majin Purification Form? Eh, it was alright. Frieza Race's Golden Form? Tch, <laughs> pretty awesome if you ask me. As for the Namekians and humans? Look at this dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Not my favorite. But being the Saiyan had the most benefits. I'm talking Super Saiyan that goes all the way to Super Saiyan 3, Super Vegeta that goes all the way to Super Vegeta 2, Future Super Saiyan that I don't even know what it does. Need I say more? Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. I'm surprised at this point we don't have Super Saiyan 4. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Besides those unique forms, there's also forms that can be used by everyone. Kaioken that can be unlocked through parallel quests and potential unleashed from completing Elder Kai's stupid challenges. Whatever race and whatever transformation you choose will help benefit you when entering missions. Most of the time. Parallel quests, or PQs for short, are essentially one of the main contents of the game. You, as a time patroller, are tasked to go out to parallel timelines and fight alongside the heroes and villains in them. They're like what-if scenarios created in the Dragon Ball world, and it's cool seeing how Dimps managed to create up to 100 missions for the base game. As you select a quest to go on, you will be able to choose up to 3 people to go out on the patrol with you. Whether you choose your own CAC or a character from Dragon Ball, you will always have a large variety to choose from. When out on patrol, there's a variety of things you're tasked to do. Whether it's collecting the Dragon Balls, fighting in tournaments, helping defeat villains, the options are there. After completing these PQs, 
you are given certain ranks based on your performance, Zenny, XP, and special rewards like clothes, super souls, and skills. Now, you would think it's easy to get those skills if you do the mission requirements, but when I tell you the RNG in this game feels like one in a million, good luck thinking you're getting that skill you've been grinding for hours. It also doesn't help the fact that your CPU teammates are brain dead and can be the reason why you lose the PQs. Like why the hell is Kid Gohan beating the crap out of Super Saiyan Blue Goku who's on my team? Man if you don't just beat the f out of him. Another annoyance I have with PQs is the fact that there are cutscenes in the game that quite literally interrupt your moves. There would be moments where I'm beating the hell out of my opponents and I decide to use one of my ultimate attacks. Then out of nowhere, a mother decides to join the battle and I've ended up wasting key. I swear this game loves to test their player's patience. There is however an easier way to get skills, and that's by finding mentors throughout Canton City to teach you their moves. There are lots of mentors that can be found in different locations, and the way you go about having them become your mentors is by accepting their battle in order for them to test out your skills. Every lesson you have with them is an always guaranteed way of getting skills with the final lesson granting you their ultimate attack. It's always nice having a mentor because as you go out and complete missions, they will always leave comments on the ranks you receive. Sometimes they can be pretty uplifting, while other times they can be just downright disrespectful. I like the fact that you can build friendships with these characters and even receive special dialogues as you progress throughout the game. There's certain instances when even while out on PQs, your mentor will help assist you to complete your mission. So yeah, if you're someone that wants to be trained by the likes of Goku, Vegeta, or even Krillin, you can do so with no problem. But of course, there was one main problematic thing I had to face when playing Xenoverse 2, and that was the expert missions. Expert missions are pretty similar to parallel quests in the sense that you go out on missions and as you complete them, you're rewarded with skills, zenny, and XP. Besides that, expert missions might be the worst thing to have come out of this game. You and a large group of time patrollers are set out to fight super bosses. And when I say super bosses, I really mean why the f did dimps make these guys so strong? Now, there's a large variety of characters you have to fight against. Whether it's the regular sized villains or even the great apes, every last one of them were very annoying because of their new movesets and boosted attributes. Cause why the hell are these bosses able to dodge everything like they unlocked Ultra Instinct, manipulate other people to fight each other, use moves that can one tap people, throw giant key blasts at the f***ing planet, and many other things on top of that. It also doesn't help that the AI are pretty useless and are only good for reviving others. Other than that, they're pretty much fodder and it will always be up to you to save them all. In the end, all I could do was cheese with ultimate attacks and pray that my teammates could survive long enough for us all to get the win. It didn't happen that often. As I've mentioned previously, like Xenoverse 1, Xenoverse 2 managed to create a story that has avoided the repetitive formula of previous Dragon Ball games. Even though you do go through the history of Dragon Ball Z, the main purpose is that you, a time patroller, must go out to prevent the many changes in history caused by the main villains of the game, Toa and her creation, Mira. Their goal is to collect as much energy from powerful warriors so they can use it to revive the demon realm. And with the help with the likes of Turles, Slug, and even Bardock who's under mind control, it is up to us to stop them. You're assigned to go out on these missions by the likes of Future Trunks, Elder Kai, and the Supreme Kai of Time, who even though looks like she's 12, is actually 75 million years old. Anime is so weird, man. It's nice being able to see these three interact with each other due to the different personalities they portray outside of your own character. Because, well, our CACs don't talk in the first place. And even with a little bonus, the game allows the player to transfer the old CAC from Xenoverse 1 to essentially be a part of the story as Trunks' partner. I liked going out on missions and seeing the different scenarios that were caused by Toa and Mira because it allowed me to be a part of the world I enjoyed so much. Helping out some of my favorite characters against the villains in certain arcs was definitely a plus. And then there were other moments in the game like the in-engine 3D cutscenes that looked pretty good but not too crazy to boast about, and the 2D animated cutscenes that gave the player another perspective from the game that felt like another episode from the series. But the best type of cutscene out of all of them is easily the pre-rendered cinematic cutscenes that gave us damn near movie quality stuff. This was, in my opinion, when the game was at its best, and I enjoyed every last bit of it. The story is full of surprises, with moments where I felt its emotion, suspense, and victories. This was easily one of my favorite game modes in Xenoverse 2. But the game isn't actually entirely offline. Xenoverse 2 even has an online lobby for players to play together. 
Parallel quests, expert missions, and even online battles are some of the many game modes you can play, with the addition of special events that happen on occasional days, like Frieza's Invasion and the World Tournament. Online battle allows you to play 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3, which has you face against others that wish to test out their skills. But with my luck, I found it difficult to find anyone online that wanted to play any of the game modes. So, I invited one of my closest friends instead. You know what, Ashley? You intend to solve me, do you? Now, this game is perfect when it comes to playing with your friends. Especially during parallel quests, when you're both trying to get specific moves, and during expert missions, when you're trying to simply survive. <laughs> I'm glad that this game has an online mode for their players, and with all sorts of game modes, you can really find something for you and your friends to play. But there's something else the game has granted the players, which has honestly kept the game alive for so long. And that, of course, was the DLC. Now, this game came out in 2016. Six years later, and there's still content coming out for this game to this day. With each DLC pack that has been released, they mostly consist of brand new characters, parallel quests, new skills, clothes, and super souls for your CAC to acquire. On some occasions, there's new stories that are added to the game, which brings back the beautiful pre-rendered cinematic cutscenes and even new mentors for you to learn from. It's crazy to think that this game has still managed to add brand new characters after so long, which for newcomers can be quite intimidating considering how much each pack costs. But if you're someone who is a huge fan of the series, you might think it's worth it. For me, I got this game when it first released, so I was able to buy the DLCs as they came out. I just wish that there were more updates for our CICs, like newer hair options and whatnot. Another thing that can be worrying for some, and me included, is the fact that as these new DLCs keep being announced, what does that mean for the future of Xenoverse 3? Will we ever see that be a possible announcement, or will the players be forced to stay and buy the newer characters? Don't get me wrong however, the characters that came with the DLC are pretty cool. And it's great getting newer skills and items. They also make parallel quests a lot easier when you don't have anyone else to go with. All in all, I do like the DLC packs that have been given to us. It's just that at times it kind of feels a little disappointing knowing that this game is being milked when they could just make a brand new game. They already have another side story going on in this game, so maybe they could expand on it to a bigger scale. It's crazy to see how far Dragon Ball games have come, and the amount of love the series has received is easily understandable. It's pretty awesome not only being able to play as a lot of the DBZ characters, but GT and Super included. Playing Dragon Ball Z Universe 2 really showed me the potential a lot of anime games can have if the right developers are behind it and commit to their games. From the character customization, to the different game modes, all the way to Kanton City itself, you can even collect all 7 Dragon Balls from the parallel quest to make different wishes for your choosing. Xenoverse has created a brand new lore for its fans to learn about, and I'd like to see more of it in the future. You can easily find yourself spending hours in this game without it feeling like a drag, and that's what I hope every game can do for me. I'd say if you're someone who's a fan of Dragon Ball, you should most definitely pick this game up and try it for yourself. There's so much for you to do without even having to play online if that's what you wish. And if you're someone who's not so familiar with Dragon Ball, I'd say it's pretty easy to pick this game up without having heavy knowledge on the series, because the game does pretty well explaining who's who and what they're about. I know that this is Xenoverse 2 and not Xenoverse 1, so you also might be wondering if you can play this game without prior knowledge of the first, and honestly, you can. They don't mention much from the previous game or even the major villain from it, but even if you did want to play Xenoverse 1, there's a DLC pack that recently came out that allows you to play through the story of the first game without having to purchase an entirely different game altogether. This is easily one of my all-time favorite Dragon Ball games, and if they do plan on developing Xenoverse 3, then you best believe I'll be one of the many people to purchase it. With that being said, if you made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching. Please consider liking the video, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.